Take a look at this welding pass right here. This is a stainless steel TIG welding pass and we can see that things are not looking quite the way that we would expect. There's a lot more going on here than you would probably think at first glance. Now check this one out right here. This is relatively thin base material that we can see here, but we can take a look at the welding area and see that it has a much different finish as well as the profile and quality of the weld is way different. So taking a look at the first one, what the heck happened with this one here? Now this is something that's a pretty common misconception with TIG welding stainless steel and honestly I wish that I learned this a lot earlier when I started in my career and let's take a look at some of the common misconceptions that people usually get stuck on this is going to be one of three categories first is going to be settings gas or gear let's talk about the misconception of settings first somebody might see something like this and look at the gray oxidized finish and the most common response that most people are typically going to come up with is it's way too hot turn the heat down so essentially basically thinking that reducing the overall heat is going to fix this problem. The second solution that most people would commonly think of is turn up the volume of the shielding gas. This might do something to help out with a few small factors, but to be honest, there are much bigger problems at play here. And the third thing that we talked about is going to be the category of gear. A lot of the time people look at their welding and they see results like this and they think that they need to spend more money on all kinds of crazy gas delivery systems, fancy cups. I will get into that stuff in a few minutes here. Hang on for that. But let's take a look at things for a second time here. Check this out. Looking at it here, does the area of the welding look washed out, sunken, hollow, concave or anything like that? No, honestly, it actually kind of looks like the edges of the weld are not really blending in all that well at all. So if we're looking at the first misconception, thinking about reducing the overall heat input actually isn't going to do much to help this category at all. If we don't have the edges that are blending in all that well, how is less heat going to help? Normally excessive heat looks something like this example here. We can see this area looks sunken, it's hollow, concave. Looking at this example, we don't see that here. Now, like we said, the second misconception is gas is going to fix this problem. Looking at it here, we can see there is too much oxide that has formed over the welding area. And I would argue that even with a really nice, super awesome cup like this stuff here from Edge Welding, while this stuff is great gear, it is not going to fix any of the bigger issues that are going on somewhere. So what the heck is going on here? What actually is the problem? What should we be looking at? I would like to turn your attention to the one thing that's actually going to make a big difference here check it out and this is going to be the heat affected zone i wish that this is the first thing that i learned when i was learning how to tig weld stainless steel so you'll also hear this referred to sometimes as the haz or as i call it with my friends the has like we talked about so many people finish their welding and they focus on the actual welding area itself but after decades of teaching people how to tig weld this is the one area that i teach people to focus on first that's right the first thing that we want to learn to understand and control and break down for information is going to be the has that's right I'm calling it the has and then once we get a good understanding on how to control this then the details of the welding come much easier after I find that trying to get the perfect results with your welding details first and then learning how to control the heat affected zone after the fact is a bit of a cart before the horse mentality so let's flip things around here learn them the other way and this is going to get you results much more quickly looking at this here the has is the area that I have highlighted here. You can see it clearly laid out. It's the area surrounding the actual welding area itself. And this doesn't always indicate what people think it does. A lot of people just assume that this is an indication of oxide, which honestly it kind of is. But what it's really going to show you is a great indication of what your actual heat input is doing. Sometimes we can see it washed out, looking wide and crazy like this here. Sometimes we can look at other examples where we can see some color, which indicates a little bit of oxide starting to form. And sometimes going back to this one, we can see it is totally blown out and gray and gross looking like this. Other times looking at work like this example here, we can see examples where the HAZ looks super narrow, very controlled, and almost at some times even invisible in some circumstances. But again, take a look at the actual edges of the pass on this example here. We can see that the edges are blending in really well where the filler material makes contact and blends into the base material. So this would indicate that the actual setting that I'm using for what I was welding with here was actually pretty hot. This is what's going to allow me to keep and maintain 
maintain good penetration into the joint, control the shape of the weld really well, and most importantly, control the oxide as well as a good finish to my welding pass. I would argue that this is something like what you would want to see here. Obviously, this depends on the thickness of material or joint type that you are doing, but we can still see a little bit of color here and there, and color does indicate that some oxide is starting to form, but things are still in control. The main thing that I'm looking for here is the overall shape of the has. We don't see it looking all wide and crazy. It looks really good and consistent all the way from the start all the way to the finish, meaning that we don't have any areas that are wider than others or skinnier than other areas. Now, when I am teaching somebody to learn stainless steel TIG welding, we focus on areas that are gonna teach them how to control this area and keep it nice and narrow and again, consistent from start to finish. This is gonna be controlled with really good heat focus, and this is always indicated by a has that looks like this. I would say ideally these examples that we are looking at are exactly what you should try and get as far as your has. Again, just don't let things get any wider or crazy or blown out like that. So let's set up and rip a few passes here. Today I am using the Canawell 201 Pulse D. This machine is a great bang for your buck. And again, if you are thinking about getting one of these setups, now is the time to do it. Canaweld is running a great rebate program on these machines. Again, if you are thinking about pulling the trigger on one of these, now is the time to do it. Now this machine is gonna be set up with very basic, simple settings. The amperage that I have programmed into my machine here is going to be controlled with my foot pedal here. And you can also see the cup on the torch that I'm using here. While it is from Edge Welding Company, it's actually pretty small. It's nothing too special for a stainless steel setup at all. And there's a lot of people who would actually argue that with the thickness of material that I'm gonna do this demonstration on, that the cup I'm using here would be actually too small. But make sure you stick around and watch what I'm doing here. I'm gonna run a couple passes on this plate here. And again, I really want to focus on keeping a consistent amount of controlled heat. I'm gonna show you something on the back side of this plate when I'm done that's gonna blow your mind, wait for it. The biggest thing that we need to focus on here is balancing the amount of filler material that we are using to the amount of heat that we are using. This is the most important thing. This is how when using different types of amperage with different material thicknesses that you may be using, you can combat the heat affected zone from getting too big. That's how I can get the smooth edges that we saw earlier as well as keeping the has narrow and controlled. Now again, getting going here, watch my start. I'm very patient, waiting for it to form. After I've given it a little bit of filler, I'm moving. And you can see that once I start moving, I'm moving along at a decent pace too. I'm not hurrying along, but I'm definitely not going very slow. You will find that there's gonna be a real sweet spot that you have to find with your travel speed in relation to the amount of filler material that you are using. And of course, obviously the amount of heat that you are using as well. One crucial part is that as we approach our finish, I always want to make sure that I back off nice and slow and then I I excessively post flow the area with more gas than it actually needs. I would say typically to post flow your work for another two to three seconds after it's finished glowing red hot. You absolutely want to make sure that you flood this area with good gas. This is extremely, extremely important. Even with the smaller cup I'm using, this still has a great impact. I also have this habit sometimes of taking my other filler material hand and cupping the area to keep the gas going back over the welded area I've already left from. But now that I'm done, let's take a look at the final results here. We can see that everything did turn out nice and controlled with the overall welding shape and size. But take a look at the heat affected zone. This thing looks perfectly consistent from start to finish. It looks really narrow and consistent. We can see it has a bit of a gold finish as opposed to being colored or gray. This indicates that the overall heat input has been controlled really well, and this makes it a lot easier for your gas delivery system to do its job. What commonly happens is people have the heat input getting out of control, and even with the best gas delivery system or the most gas that you can run through your torch, it's not gonna do any good. Your gas has a much easier time doing its job, even with a simple setup like I'm using here, once you learn how to keep your heat input in check. But do you wanna see something even crazier? Look at this here. As I flip this piece over, check out the bottom. Typically we see a really gross and oxidized finish on the other side, which is not supplied by gas. But when we are controlling our heat input, we can see that there is definitely a little bit of oxide on here, but look how clean it is. We can still see that there is actually penetration into the workpiece, but working to get a much more controlled heat input as well as a proper HAZ, this is going to keep the backside from forming excessive oxide as well at times. Pretty cool, right? Now there is also a couple things that you can do to help out with things and this also 
also works really well with carbon steel. We want to make sure that your welding lanes are not too wide. In my online program with my students, I go through different variations of how wide your welding lane should be in relation to the material thickness that you're using. That's right, it changes a lot depending on how thick your material is. This plays an extremely important role. If you do have gas supply, but your welding area doesn't actually look too sunken or hollow or concave, but you are still experiencing oxidization like this, I would recommend to reduce the welding width to a narrower puddle. Again, with this example here, you can see the dimensions of how thin this material is. It's pretty thin, but you can still see that I've managed to keep things consistent and really clean for the most part. I have this free class on TIG welding stainless steel. It's pretty much a full workshop. It's free on my website. It's like 45 minutes long. It's gonna run you through all of the setup and settings to get going. It's gonna give you a great direction to get started with these subjects with TIG welding stainless steel. Click the link in the description below, go watch it and do a random act of kindness for a stranger today. I'm Dusty James, Phil and Chill, we'll talk soon, peace.